In this video, I'm going to discuss the process of the selection of a set of different self-study foreign language materials to be studied in sequence so as to set up and establish a, a self-study program uh, that will take you from presumably no knowledge of a foreign language at all up to and perhaps even through the intermediate level, what is generally known as the intermediate level, and which uh, it might in more technical terms be known in America, in the American system, the ILR system, uh, perhaps to level 2 or even level 2 plus, and in the European system of ratings uh, through level B1 certainly and perhaps into level B2, that is the again the general intermediate or high intermediate range which I believe is about the highest level of foreign language competence that it's possible to attain by any means of study per se, either self-study or being taught in a school or an institute, and to get into the higher range than that, into the advanced range, always requires activation of some sort, uh, ideally going to the country and really interacting uh, with the native speakers in their living context, or at very least uh, systematically uh, reading a great deal and watching movies and listening to broadcasts and recorded books and the like, uh, which is another form of study, of course, but uh, it's not quite the same as building the foundations and uh, getting knowledge and competence of the language. So um, this is something that I believe very firmly is possible to uh, attain more effectively and more efficiently uh, by means of self-study, and in, that's the, been the whole purpose of this series of videos. Um, in the past uh, six or eight of them, reviewing, I've talked about other styles of learning languages, other styles of studying, uh, we can call it, but in fact many of those methods and many of the most uh, contemporary methods are designed for people who uh, don't want to study per se. Perhaps they don't know how, perhaps they uh, don't like it or not capable of it. Um, and there are other ways for people like this uh, to, to learn and acquire languages. But this video and my whole series uh, is really intended for people who are either like myself, uh, perhaps really do enjoy uh, the process of studying for learning and acquiring knowledge, or who at very least uh, accept that, uh, know how to do it, and accept it as a necessity of the best way of, of building a really firm foundation and getting established in something. So, uh, to go about getting a, a, a set of materials to use for studying uh, foreign languages, uh, let me first talk about why that's necessary, because I know uh, that I have many uh, students or potential clients come to me and say, very hopefully, after they've chosen a, a good book or a good method, so um, I, I read this book and then I know the language, right? And I only wish it were that easy, but unfortunately it is not. Uh, even if you are lucky enough to find a truly comprehensive manual, and, and there are some out there, some books uh, that in and of themselves uh, do contain very thorough explanations of everything you need to know uh, in terms of the grammar of a language and give lots of um, examples and exercises so that you can learn them and have a very full and rich vocabulary so that in theory uh, the content of a single uh, comprehensive manual like this would be sufficient to take you to and through that intermediate level. Um, in, in point of practice, uh, learning a foreign language, obviously uh, you need at some point to be introduced to every aspect of it, every new point, uh, but um, in, in learning a foreign language it's actually far more important than, than getting this new information is how you process it and how you retain it, which means that the review process, review and revision is ultimately a lot more important than actually uh, being introduced to the new material. You have to continuously revise and re review in light of all the new material that you have learned uh, so that you're uh, integrating and uh, digesting the material uh, to uh, deeper and higher levels all the time. Uh, and so if you only have a single manual, uh, what will tend to happen is that perhaps even though you do not become consciously bored of going over it again and again, you will still become somehow 
dulled to it or inured to the material uh, so that you can't uh, r retain it, as, uh, work with it as, as freshly as you could if, uh, as if you were to get a number of different presentations. And so I think that this is a manifestation of what, what I believe or at least hope to be a, a general truth about the uh, search for knowledge. Uh, that it's always better to get things from a variety of perspectives and in different presentations than uh, simply from one single source. So I do believe that uh, it's very necessary to have a, a, so a variety uh, of manuals uh, to set up a, a program for self-study. Uh, and uh, so, so how many do you need or will you need? That's obviously a very... Uh, relative, uh, contingent, and subjective question. It depends upon your prior uh, level of experience in studying foreign languages and upon the relative difficulty uh, of the language that you want to study. That is how different and uh, exotic it might be or, or how relatively uh, easy and familiar it might be to you. Uh, if it is, uh, if you have some experience, and particularly if the, the language is similar to your own or languages you've already studied, uh, in those cases you might do with a, a single comprehensive manual or, or, or two. But uh, in the case of languages if, uh, that are relatively exotic or very exotic, uh, that use utterly different uh, systems of, of writing and of thinking and of vocabulary and everything, um, you probably will need to get your hands on uh, all the good, solid uh, mat self study material that, that's out there available at some point or another. Um, so uh, on the average, though, if we can talk about that, uh, just as a, a general ballpark figure, I would say you probably need a good handful of methods, five, five or six methods, uh, to work with, to give yourself full coverage of, of all the materials that you need to know, uh, as to uh, really integrate the, 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 the mechanics of the language and, and build a, a decent vocabulary from which you can then grow naturally into it, into the advanced level. Um, so, uh, as you go about choosing the materials, uh, again, I do this video in reference to the, uh, ult first and foremost, to the, uh, to the 19 original videos that I made reviewing uh, more than that, more like uh, 25 different product lines of, of study materials. Um, and so the first step uh, you would need to take is, uh, among other things, to, to see all of those uh, videos and just sort of have a reaction that that looks like a, a good system, a good type of, of learning for me. Um, and beyond that, in particular, I make reference to the immediately preceding video on typologies of uh, foreign language learners and of foreign language manuals, in which I talked about the fact that the uh, study materials can really be divided into three uh, basic uh, valuable categories depending on the uh, type of learner they're intended for and the way they present the information. Uh, first and foremost, there is the type of manual for the type of learner who uh, w works well uh, by having things uh, specifically, uh, rationally, logically, clearly, analytically explained. Uh, uh, give an explanation, learn that way, and then uh, do some exercises to make sure that uh, you, you understand the explanation. Um, a second way of learning uh, is more for people who learn by doing just sort of uh, get into the practice of doing something, and these are manifested in the um, the uh, the pattern drill type exercise books uh, that just sort of get you going through the ropes of the mechanics of how every particular language works. Uh, and the third way uh, is what I call the process of uh, sort of almost deductive learning. You uh, learn by observation. Uh, you're given uh, an annotated textual type uh, passage, and uh, you do get explanations for it ultimately. But the main way you work with it is you sort of uh, you, you learn it and you observe how the, the language works on its own. You draw your own conclusions before you read the explanations. So those are the three types, main types of uh, learning materials, three main types of learners, and I think that uh, all three of those types of manuals uh, can and should play a role in any effective self-study plan, but uh, the role that they play uh, depends upon your learning style, uh, and so the mixture of those books, uh, different types of materials, uh, the, the quantity of each one that you'd want to use, and when uh, you would want to introduce it, what you would want to start with, and what you would want to conclude with, would be different depending upon your your learning style. And so knowing your learning style for foreign languages um, can be uh, uh, sometimes uh, a bit problematic because the way that you learn and process a foreign language may or may not be uh, similar to the way 
that you learn other things. So if you're an experienced learner uh, and you know how you generally process information, you may think, well, I have a a logical analytical mind. I think that I would uh, learn a language best by uh, processing, by using the sort of the, the grammatical explanation method. Um, and that might be the case, but it might not. You might find that you would actually uh, learn better by one of the other methods, by practice or something, which, which might surprise you. Um, and the reason for this is because uh, learning a language is somehow different from my experience of all other aspects of humanistic learning and in all other fields of learning that I have great experience and familiarity with. Um, what is required basically is understanding initially of, of the information that you're receiving and then memory retention uh, and that's uh, pretty much enough uh, to build a body of say historical knowledge or literary knowledge or something along those lines but when it comes to linguistic knowledge um, there are other aspects that are added you need to integrate it and activate it and put it into practice uh, and so that's a different process altogether of learning so uh, if you have uh, experience in language learning well then you really don't need my advice so much, but if you don't, uh, you might need to do a bit of experimentation to figure out which of uh, these uh, learning styles really uh, is, is best suited for you. At any rate, presuming somehow you uh, have done that fairly well, uh, let me just sort of talk about, I think, what would be uh, a good procedure of uh, going through a sequence of type materials for these uh, three basic different learning styles. Uh, if you do have a primarily uh, analytical, logical uh, mind that would work uh, best by explanations, and you're going to need to choose about five different uh, manuals or materials, um, I would suggest that uh, it's always good to begin with an overview first and foremost. So uh, take a, a short overview type uh, grammar, bird's eye grammar, that will uh, give you an overview of what you're going to see. Uh, and then you could probably, again, this is always assuming that there, uh, you're studying a language for which there uh, is a relatively great quantity and uh, range of materials to study with, um, I think you would probably do well to work through not just one, but two different thorough and comprehensive uh, grammar translation type uh, teaching manuals, uh, from which point you might want to then turn to one of the um, the uh, the deductive ones, the the observation type manuals. By this, I mean the Asimil or Linguaphone type course book that you could use uh, precisely because it's annotated as a sort of a test to see how much uh, you have integrated from uh, the explanatory, explanatory style learning that you have done. Uh, and then I think that you will find that at the end that uh, there are always going to be some particularly sticky hard points that you need to iron out, and then you could turn to a uh, a pattern drill type manual uh, and go through it very selectively choosing particularly those uh, those those aspects of the grammar that are, are difficult for you and, and drilling them in that fashion to make them a bit smoother. Um, if you have that initial sort of uh, learning by doing uh, type mind, uh, then in that case I think that let, well, let me backtrack for a second. I said for, for all of these methods, uh, if you have any degree of uh, anxiety or fear about learning a language in the first place, you might do well to uh, begin with a different kind of method altogether, one of these Michel Thomas type um, uh, audio methods that would get you a bit familiar and comfortable with the language. But in particular, if you have this uh, sort of learning by doing type uh, mind for languages. I think that if uh, you might do very well to work first and foremost through a full-scale uh, Pimsleur's type course, if, if that exists, to give you some familiarity with the uh, contemporary spoken sound of the language, because where you're really going to want to turn for your primary learning will be to a, a foreign service institute type uh, full pattern drill style uh, manual. Uh, and uh, we know that these were recorded some time ago uh, with uh, accents that might not be the, the best for you to uh, learn as, as a pattern model. So uh, if you had the other model first, that would be good. So if uh, you were to work through a book like this, um, I think that would give you the most solid foundation you could have, but then you would want to tie things together by going through some sort of, uh, I think, bird's eye overview type uh, grammar to make sure that uh, there were no loose points. And then you might want to take uh, another, uh, a shorter perhaps, uh, style 
of the same uh, pattern drill type books that you could work through on your own, go through on your own pace rather than using the recordings to make sure that you had that down. And then you could turn to, again, uh, a uh, assimilar linguaphone type annotated textual book to make sure that uh, you had everything uh, uh, internalized uh, before you actually went in and activated the language. And then finally, uh, turning to that style of learning, uh, the learning by observation, uh, which is I think my own primary style, I think that you would uh, always do very well to uh, begin with uh, an Asimil uh, manual or two, uh, as I talked about in that initial video, that's probably the, the best overall series to turn to for language learning materials, and they come in several generations, and so if you can find uh, perhaps two of those or uh, uh, a couple of those, and then say a linguaphone also as well, uh, to just get uh, material uh, from, to do as much observation as you can on your own uh, before I think you would then want to turn uh, to uh, at least go through one very comprehensive uh, grammar translation style manual, uh, having done those observations just to make sure that uh, everything gelled completely. Uh, and then like the kind of people that would learn through those books uh, initially, I think your final stage of uh, sort of self-studying polishing would be to want to turn to a foreign service institute type manual of drills to go specifically to those areas that are uh, difficult and problematic for you and iron them out by working that way. So these are just uh, three basic uh, sort of models of suggestions for ways that you might want to go about uh, building a self-study program. There are obviously lots of variations you could do upon those. I hope that this is my um, penultimate uh, vic uh, m uh, video uh, in this series. I would like to do one more in which I make some more specific uh, recommendations for some uh, particularly popular languages. Uh, and then uh, finally, at long last, I will move on to making some other series of uh, videos for other language families uh, like I did for the Germanic language family and some more methodological and uh, videos and also some videos talking more about uh, literature and great books. So.